Welcome to a new video. In this video we will discuss the voltage to current converter circuit. We will see how we can determine the relationship between this load current and the input voltage. Of course we will see that step by step in our calculations and we will verify this in SPI simulations. Okay, we have an objective that is given by the following statement. Given the voltage to current converter circuit, which is shown here, and the op-amps are ideal, determine the expression of the load current IL, which is given here, which is through this RL, in terms of this input voltage Vs. In this case, it is given as an AC source, but can be also a DC source. We have here four resistors. They are all equal to each other. We have also this feedback resistor that will determine shortly. We will see that the, uh, the current also. And we have here our load current, which will be then pushed in this load resistor. Okay. Now let's see the solutions for this question. Okay, what we first do is we will recognize from our ideal op-amp that the input currents in the input nodes are zero. So the currents here in the non-inverting input and the inverting input of this first op-amp will be zero. That's also valid for the second op-amp. Now then we can also say that the source current, which is supplied by the source voltage, will be then like so. Since this is zero, we can say from this node, we will have exact same current also here for, for this resistor. Now the same is also valid for this resistor because that is just the same current. Now since there is no current flowing in here, then we have also the same IS here. Okay, now we can now make here a loop, which is then using a Kirchhoff's voltage law and then set up an equation. Now let's do the first loop, one. We can say minus Vs, if we start here, plus the R times Is, which is just Ohm's law, plus this voltage, which is actually zero. So that's actually what I did here purposely, which is the difference between these two, which is by negative feedback twice this op-amp make this zero. And plus the voltage here, then I'm again back at where I begun. So we have now R times Is as the fourth term here in the correct expression. That will need to add up to zero. That is the expression of the Kirchhoff's voltage law. Now we can also make a second loop, which is shown here. So I will start here at this dot, make this complete loop and come back here. Now, how do we set up here the equation? Again, we need to look at the condition for the ideal op-amp. Now we know that the current in the op-amp is zero. That means this current here is will be then also the same for the current for the feedback resistor RF. Okay, now we can set the equation. We start here. Now we can say it is done R times IS, which is plus R times IS because the current flowing from plus to minus sign. And then IL times RF, that's the second term. And then since this potential is the exact same as this potential because it's due to negative feedback, this potential is also there. So we have the same potential here and there. So potential wise, we can go from here to there. And then we have also this voltage, which is then R times IS, which is this third term. And I am again back to the position here because the potential difference between here is zero. So I have here now the equation. Now I can now simplify these two equations by saying, okay, these two are exact same. And I can say VS will be then two times the R times IS. Okay, let's then make this equation number one. We can also make an equation here. We can say two times R I S will be minus R F I L. Just move this to the right side and then add these two together. And that will be then our equation number two. Now we can now substitute equation number one into the equation number two. So just this expression replace it by V S in here. And we have this expression. And we see here V S will be minus R F times the load current. Or you can write it like so, if you want an expression for the load current, that is then minus Vs over Rf. So we see here that the load current depends on the value of the Vs. So that's actually what we want to know, but also on the value of Rf. So if the Rf is changing, your load current will change. Of course, if the Vs is changing, your load current will change. But those two parameters will only influence your load current, nothing else. So if this is changing, of course, all of the same, or your load resistor is changing, that will in 
ideal case, do not change your load current according to this expression. We will see that shortly in the simulation result also. Now let's go first to the simulation results from this equation and so prove that this is indeed correct. Now let's first come up with the circuit in the SPI simulator. You see here the VNs, the four resistors, they are all equal. I just picked up here 10 kilo ohms, but you can also go for another value. If you also select some value for RF and here for LL, RL, so for the load and the feedback resistor, you can see that this is indeed according to this expression. Now we have here the two kilo ohm for our feedback resistor. And the VS is taken here, looking at this graph. This is the blue one, which is a sine wave, which has an amplitude of 10 volts and a frequency of 100 hertz. So 0 0.01 as the period, as the second. Now I see first the red one has the load current. It is inverted, so that is because of this minus sign. That is already correct. And you see here, since the RF is 2000 ohms, so you have here 10 volts here over 2000 will be then minus 0.5 actually when you have the maximum so when you have the maximum voltage for your input you will have the minimum current at the output here and when you go to the minus 10 volts you will see that this minus minus 10 over 2000 will be indeed 5 milliamps so these are, are indeed correct so you see actually that this waveform is the inverse of this waveform and the currents are also correct so we can say this is indeed correct according to these two values in this case we have user load of 1k so 1 kilo ohm but we will see shortly that this is also not influencing our load current the only influence is then by the feedback resistor so we can say this is checked and we very verified our expression now let's go to the simulation result for the effect of the load resistor because we said that this is not affecting the load current so changing load resistor keeping this rf constant will not change the load current now the circuit is shown here we keep our rf at 2 kilo ohms but we will change our load resistor so so how do we change that is actually shown here so again our vs is shown here which is now here 10 volts peak so again the same frequency but now we go here from dark brown, green, olive color, and then pink and the red one. We go actually changing the load resistor. So we have here 100, then 200. So we increase it 500, 1 kilo ohm, and 2 kilo ohms. What you see is they have exact same shape and also exact same peak peak values. So the maximum and the minimum. So there is no change at all uh, if I change the load resistor. So if the feedback resistor stays here at 2 kilo ohms we always have 5 milliamps max and minus 5 milliamps minimum depending on uh, only on the resistor of the feedback and no effect of the load resistor okay so this is again the proof that this is indeed correct as we have mentioned in the formula let's now look at the effect of the feedback resistor so we will keep now the load resistor at some value in this case one kilo ohm, and now we will sweep or change the feedback resistor the result all shown here so we will now keep the load resistor as set now you see here the again our input voltage the blue so again the same one 10 volts peak and 100 kilo, uh, 100 hertz as the frequency this one is for rf of 100 ohm now if this is correct let's check the formula it is again inverted so that's already correct so we do here 10 over 100 it will be then minus 0.1, which is then correct because this is 0.1 amps and it is minus 0.1 amps and it is inverted. So if I go to the RF of 200, now you can see that it is indeed 50 milli and minus 50 to 500. So you see that this is indeed decreasing according to this formula. So linearly we go down if I increase my RF, my feedback resistor. So again, we have proven that this is indeed only affected by the feedback resistor and not by the load resistor all right was our example considering the voltage to current converter using this uh, op amp configurations if you have any questions comments please let me know i will try to answer them as soon as possible see you next time in another video